Well, welcome to this new video of uh, Triumph Assembly and Disassembly. And this is a gearbox for a 1925 Model P Triumph. It's a 500cc version. And what I've done is uh, I've taken the gearbox apart, mainly because we were finding that it was jumping out of gear. Um, and no matter how much I adjusted the handles and the indents on the gearbox, I couldn't manage to, to make it stay in gear, especially the, the top gear. Uh, so I needed to take it apart to understand why, and I wanted to put this down on video to try and show others how it all goes together. This is a very unusual model of the Model P's, mainly because you'll see here, this has got the, the scissor clutch. You can see here you've got the two arms. And basically the, the clutch mechanism works by these arms being squeezed together. I'm not going to go into the details of the clutch. That's for another video. But this is the, um, the, the video of the gearbox itself. And the gearbox is common to most of the Model P's of this era. So you can see here I'd stripped the, uh, the gearbox apart. Um, so you have the, the gear operating linkage. You have the two gears that slide over the splined shaft. You have the fork selectors, the fork gear rods. Um, you have a central brass bush with the, the roller bearings. Um, you have the delay shaft, the sprocket, and the various other bits and pieces. And this here is the, the gear selector device uh, on the left. And this is the end cover with the clutch uh, and um, the primary drive sprocket already uh, assembled onto it. This is the gearbox housing itself. Now what I've done is I've already assembled the Kickstarter shaft into the gearbox. It's, it's very, very straightforward. It's just a straight shaft. Um, you can see there's a, a return spring there. And when we turn the gearbox over, we'll be able to see the, the internal side of it. But it's basically just a, a very simple uh, cotter pin arrangement here with a bolt sitting through it. And you can see the spring going, spring going over the top of it there. Um, there's nothing else I've really done to that. Um, you can see when I put it here, this is the this is the kick start kick starter shaft, and I've already put a new bearing in at the top here. Uh, very very simple. You just measure the size of the the um, existing bearing that's on there, and you put a new one in. Uh, you you can try and find exactly the right size uh, from the, the the Triumph manual, but a lot of these uh, housings are worn, as are the shafts, and it's often better just to blueprint the thing to make sure it's uh, straightforward. Um, I've cleaned the inside of it as, as well as I can. You've got two bosses here. These are for the shafts that support the, uh, the gear for linkage forks. And this hole here is for the selector itself. Uh, you can see here we've got a, a ratchet mechanism on here for the Kickstarter so that when you actually pull the Kickstarter down, this drives one way into the, uh, the mating part on the other side of the, the, uh, the, the gear shaft. This is the spline shaft itself. Um, you can see here it's got a, a, a set of splines in this section here, and this is for the, um, the, the gears to slide up and down on. We have bearing surfaces, and we also have a tapered section on here, and I'll show you where that, uh, where, how that uh, sorts itself out afterwards. And then we have a, a shaped spacer and a shim. The shim is important if you are going to be packing it out. Uh, it, I've got a bunch of different sizes of shims just ready, just in case I needed to change them. But luckily, the, the, the gearbox assembled quite nicely without the need for additional shims. This is the gear that I put onto the end of it. And you can see the way that I put the, the, the gear of, of slid on the end of here. I put the shim in the back of it, and I put the spacer in with the, the reduced size facing out. And that's it, it from the other side. You can see there's an oil way groove cut into here to make sure you get lubrication throughout the, the bearing. The bearings at this end are, bush, are, are phosphor bronze bushes, very, very simple. Now, what I want to draw your attention to here is these dogs here. Uh, you can see that it's a very straightforward dog clutch. And so the idea is that when the, the mechanism slides this gear up and down that shaft, these dogs just dig into the mating dogs on the, uh, the other side of the, the, the gear. Now, these teeth here need to have an need to be sharp and they need to have an, an angle on them so that when the dogs actually latch together that they will actually stay latched together if you have them if you have a straight surface it will it'll it'll stay in for a while but after a while the edges of this tooth will round and it'll slip out so if you have a slight angle on this gear 
and the same on the mating parts and you have the, the same angle on the mating gear then when they actually lock in together they actually lock in together and they don't tend to pull out this is the shaft as it's put through the uh, the bearing on the uh, the gearbox casing itself and you can see i've got a little woodruff key on the side of here we then put on the final drive sprocket we've got another shim in there and we've got the nut on the end and, and that obviously tightens both onto the taper and onto the key we rarely have problems with this at all so then we start looking at the inside of the gearbox. This is the bearing carrier, uh, and you can see it's a, a again it's a, a phosphor bronze or a brass uh, how, uh, holder. I tend to pack this with grease to put the the bearings in, and then I fill this with grease as well because this actually sits inside one of the uh, one of the shafts. So that is the uh, rollers assembled. That is a washer that fits on the end that basically holds those rollers in um, and what I've done here is I put the shaft I put this over the shaft and you can see here so that the bearings are now up against the lower side here now the important thing to remember is that when you put this together you need to turn the gearbox upside down because if you do it the, if you do it you have to if you have, if you have the shafts facing downwards like this you can then slide this brass bush up and then secure it in place. If you try to do it any other way, there's a good chance that those little roller bearings will pop out and that's not what you want. You can see here I've also put in the gear selector and I've just put this in from the inside and slid it across. If you don't do it at this stage, you won't be able to get it past the gears as you put the gears in. So it's important to put that in now. Um, very, very straightforward little device and you can see there's three holes there for the indents. I'm not going to put the indent in just yet. I'm just going to leave, put that in there to make sure I've got it in, in place. This is the fork selector and one of the sliding gears. And again, you can see it's a very straightforward gear mechanism. And again, on here, you can see how I've angled the teeth, the leading edge of these uh, teeth on the dog gear. So. What I, what I did was I, I, I filed them down, I, I ground a little bit away so that there is a little bit of play in the gear now, but what it means is that on the driving faces, th this gap is slightly bigger than it would be normally, but that doesn't matter because that back end there doesn't really do a great deal. This driving face here is the important one, um, and that's the part that I wanted to make sure was at a slight angle to make sure it stayed secured, and I got it then hardened as well. And there's a that's a pretty good photo of the showing the leading edge that I'd have ground onto the the uh, the dogs there and that's the intermediate second gear this is the one that tends to cause the most problems it's got dogs on both sides and it will wear quite a lot and you will find a lot of this where you see the teeth start to round on the edges it would have been nice to get that completely redone but uh, the fact is if I got myself a new gear I would have had to have done all the rest of this anyway and to be honest those leading edges aren't that that much of a problem because once it's in place you do have plenty of, uh, of area there for the, the gears to drive on. So there you can see the, um, the gearbox housing again and the make this is going to be the sliding gear that slides over the top of this shaft here and it'll dig into this dog here and it'll also dig into a dog on the other side. So this is the um, uh, the the the, uh, the main drive shaft and this is the, the lay shaft with the kickstarter on it. So there we go, we've got the first of the gears in. Um, you need to make sure that the gears are in the right, <laughs> the right way around. You can turn that gear the wrong way around, and if you do, you'll find that the, the leading edge of those dogs that I was talking about will be going the wrong way. It's very easy to put it in the wrong way, but it's very easy to see that you've put it in the wrong way. What I've also done is I've put this rod in. So I've put the rod in, and then I've slid the, the gear selector down on the top of that, um, and you'll see again how I then fitted that little knob end there into this gear selector as it, as it went down. So that's that first part in. You then have the main gear cluster that will fit on this shaft here um, and that then needs to have the this fork into there as well. So when you put the fork in there you need to make sure that this lump there's a little selector section in there which fits onto the end of this selector. So you have to basically put it in and then slide it round 
to get it into there and then put this rod in. If you put the rod in and slide this down, you won't get it to fit because you won't be able to get the gear cluster over and you won't be able to get that over the edge of here without getting it disconnected from that. So again, I've got the rod in there, for, in there, but the rod on this side is the last thing that you put in. And there we go. So you can see here that um, I've got the gear fork in there already. And you can see how I've slid it in this way and I'm now going to slide it around so that then it latches onto there. And then I'll put the securing pin in like that. You'll also notice I didn't put any of the bearings in here. It gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're trying to get this shaft wiggled and giggled and, and meshed up with all the rest of the gears. Um, and you can always do that later, which is what we've done there. So you can see here, I've put the rod in and I've now started to put the, the bearings in. And you see how I put them in, in a, a, a star shape. I did pack the, I should have said, I did pack the other side of this, uh, this brass holder with grease to make sure it's all uh, running on grease. It is filled with oil, this gearbox, uh, but uh, I tend to use grease. Uh, grease tends to work a lot better and you can get some very uh, uh, thick gearbox grease from your vintage motor supplier. And I, I tend to prefer that uh, because it tends to be the gearbox is designed to use that and uh, it, it, it works a lot better in my opinion on, on the grease that you can get. If you can't get the grease, use the heaviest oil you can find, 50, 60 weight, um, but then you'll have issues of, of, of sealing and transmission. This is the indent, uh, so we've got a little, just a little screw, a thread, a spring, and this is the indent itself. Make sure the indent is relatively smooth on the end of it, uh, and then this screws into the side of the uh, the engine housing like this, the gearbox casing like this on the under, other side of this. And what I put the actuator arm and the linkage on there. And what you want to do now is you want to slide this up and down and make sure that when the, the levers click into the little indents on this arm, that these gear selectors are exactly in the middle of the driving gears. You run that up and down a couple of times and then you'll work out whether or not you need any shimming uh, on the back of this shaft or on this shaft and you can see here I've got a shim on the end of there but what you need to do is you can't you can't adjust the fork arm you can't adjust the position of the the, the indent and the detent on the, the the gearbox casing so the only if it's out of whack the only thing you can do is you can then shim the position of these gear shafts and um, it's important that you do get those gears so that when it is especially when it's in second gear, you need to make sure that that second gear, that second gear drive shaft is perfectly square with the, the mating gear in the middle of this cluster here. The other two aren't so much of a problem because they do have um, stops on the end, so basically you can force them right up against the, the walls of the engine casing, but the second gear one is a floating gear, and so therefore you need to make sure that is properly aligned. And so shim it properly and you won't have any problems. This is the mating part, sorry I'll go back one photograph, so what we've got here is this is the, the last gear, this then fits into a, a bearing and on the other side of, uh, of this you'll then find another gear that will mesh into this one but will also act as a dog that fits into this. And there you can see, so there's the, the bearing for that lower shaft and there's the dog that will then uh, mesh into the top part and you can see there's a gear on the outside of it. Again I built this all up when I built the, the clutch up but again on these on this part here I did cut the angles into the dogs not so much of a problem but um, if this uh, this is uh, this will actually dig quite nicely into the uh, into the other dog and it sits a lot easier than the first or second gear uh, again cleaned it all up because this is a ceiling face make sure you've got no dints or dings around the outside of here especially if you're going to go for the oil uh, the oil lubrication uh, but that, that is the, the, the mating part that I'm now just going to bolt up. And it's just held on by, by a bunch of bolts on the side. And that's it. So I've now put that on there. Um, I've, I've suspended it from the, the, the bike itself. You can see, so we've got the gear, the, the kickstart here with the spring. You can see there's the, the, the main drive. And then on here, you've got a little uh, feeder that you can use to uh, fill with oil. Or you can use it as a, a, a check for the gearbox itself. Uh, for the, the, the grease levels in the gearbox uh, and that and that's it so we've uh, we've been through the the gearbox we've shown how it fits together we've shown the the key parts for me the key is to make sure that you have those dogs 
uh, a slight leading angle on them. Uh, make sure the tips are sharp, make sure they're hardened, uh, make sure they're shimmed on the, the center shaft uh, correctly. Um, and, and when you assemble it, just make sure you put them in the right order um, or else you won't be able to get those forks to properly line up. Um, and that's it, that's uh, put back on the bike. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to message me.